Hey, Ross here. We're back with a new video. This one's kind of a unique one. I was able to jump out of the boat one day and jump right in with the Ohio fisheries biologist and the USGS. But today we're going out originally here at the very beginning on a gill net boat. I know that word is kind of a dirty word, but you'd be amazed to see the process on how they do it, keep that mortality rate in the right direction. And then, you know, how they're actually specifically targeting a certain size of fish, because as you can imagine with this tagging study, they don't all want the same year class or all males or all females. So really as archaic as some of this is, they really have it down to a science and it's nice to know that our fisheries people are actually working for us. So we're out here collecting walleye to tag in collaboration with the United States Geological Survey. And this is a GLaDOS funded project. So GLaDOS is Great Lakes Acoustic Tour. Acoustic telemetry observation system. We're putting acoustic transmitters that are about yay big inside of the fish uh, to monitor their movements throughout the year. These tags have a 10 year battery life, so if the fish don't get harvested, we'll have a ton of data on their movements. And in addition to looking at where they're moving throughout Lake Erie, uh, we're also seeing where they are in the water column. The tags have a pressure sensor that allows us to estimate their depth and looking at uh, the physical environment that they're using uh, as they're moving around the Western Basin, Central Basin, East Basin, basically anywhere in Lake Erie that these fish go, there's the expectation that we'll uh, detect their movements. So we're basically, as we fish this time of year, especially for male fish, we're looking for the rocky substrate that's found on all the reefs. Uh, contour changes. So we'll see with this that we went from 12 foot of water up over an eight foot deep hump of rock back onto what I'd call a scattered rock sand flat in like 15 foot. So hopefully we find an area where the fish want to hold. And um, yeah, just definitely hard substrate. That's what we're looking for. That seems to be the best. Your males are just cruising around in that right now. So. Do you ever find a correlation with the water clarity? Uh, in these four R nets, the dirtier the water, the better. Better just for that's the lack of visibility. Um, I would say we're probably on the border right now of water clarity here, affecting probably the eyesight of the walleye. It's probably getting a little bright down there. So if this doesn't work, we'll probably be moving to some dirtier water. Yeah, this is just going to be our holding pig. Uh, we'll drive over the USGS vessel transfer fish over there they got a pump system recirculating tank that they'll hold fish for longer but. this is just a much short-term holding tank for the walleye yeah. so basically the fish will be in here as we're pulling the net and then if we're doing our job right they should be in this for 10 minutes or less and then we'll go to the next boat drop them off transfer them where they've got two cover tanks same size with fresh water uh, to keep them happy all right. So this is a gill net. This is what we're using today to collect the fish. Uh, what we're fishing right now is 300 foot panels that are 100 foot long by six foot tall. Uh, they're different size meshes. So we're talking about mesh, this, different size meshes will catch different size fish. Um, we can use gill nets for our surveys. Uh, we're fishing the same type of net in the same locations year after year in the fall for walleye or we can break them down and kind of use them for head hunting uh, like we're doing today. Uh, so the net, like I said, is 300 foot long and it's fishing in about 12 to 15 foot of water and it's standing six foot up off the bottom and hopefully it'll be full of walleye here when we pull it uh, in a few minutes. We're gonna give it a 10 or a 15 minute soak time, let that fish, then we're gonna pull it and see how many walleye we've got in it. So this is our gill net roller. We'll pull the net over this spinning wheel. Just makes it a little bit easier. Mechanical advantage for us, so. We'll put a pan here so that the mesh doesn't get caught on any of these bolts or anything. Pull the gill net into this tub and we'll pick fish out of the net as we're going along into the live release tank. GLaDOS, which we're tagging fish, uh, Great Lakes Acoustic Telemetry Observation System has been around since about 2010. It started uh, through some federal funding to the Great Lakes Fishery Commission through the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. And a lot of that early funding went to establishing 
uh, the infrastructure, so all the equipment that we use to listen for tag fish, bringing people in who had experience working with it, because it's, uh, it's not super common to have the amount of uh, infrastructure that we have now in the Great Lakes. Those early projects were focused on really uh, economically important species like walleye, lake sturgeon, or invasive species like sea lamprey, grass carp, and now it's really kind of blown up. Um, people watching this can go on their computers and search GLADOS, G-L-A-T-O-S, find the website and look up all the different varieties of projects that are going on on Lake Erie and across the Great Lakes. And uh, there's also a map that shows locations where each of the acoustic receivers that listens for the tag fish in Lake Erie and beyond are, are located so you can zoom in on your favorite fishing spot and see uh, what else is listening for tag fish while you're fishing type thing. comes the start of the net. So now we're going to try and we're going to start picking the fish out, getting them out as quick as we can. We're getting the fish out. Or no? Getting the fish out as quick as we can. Throwing them back in. How big is our shad get? A little bit bigger than that. Yep, I'll get it. Three pounds probably. Micro system up. Okay guys, so like we lost one walleye in the first go around and we're using a gill net so this isn't a huge deal but like how off who's normally losing the most amount of fish here probably brian probably me yeah so, sounds about right yeah brian usually, be, usually on you something goes wrong it's brian all right so now we've just finished pulling pulling the net picking the walleye out Got a tank of eight or ten fish right now. We're gonna run it to the USGS boat. We're gonna transfer the fish to them and they're gonna do the actual tagging. While that's going on, we've got the net reset. Hopefully we'll get some more fish for uh, the next batch. Underneath the fish is a electro anesthesia pads, more or less a tens unit to do to uh, electro anesthesia, and then you have water going to the gills of the fish to keep it irrigated. We make an incision off the mid line of the fish, about an inch or so, big enough so that. I can first get a transmitter in there and this transmitter is going to provide information on fish location and then also we have another type of tag that actually has a stalk that comes off the end of it that's going to sense light luminescence that's going to hang out the side of the fish and I'll make a little hole off the incision site here. Well, what is that going to tell us? It's going to tell us um, how, f like, it it'll actually measure light from the surface. So wherever this fish is inhabiting, like different um, 
different depths. It'll tell us depth and temperature, but it'll also give us what light is being passed through the water at that particular location. So it'll give us some information on just what habitats. Yeah, what habitats this fish is actually occupying, be it depth or light in the water. And then we tie her up. Two uninter un uninterrupted sutures on the incision site. I lift the skin up so that I don't pierce anything down below. Pull that guy through. And all my tools and everything, the tags have been sterilized with betadine solution and then rinsed off with dissolved uh, DI water. And there's one. And I'll tell you as I do the second one, I don't, I apply different pressure on each of the, whoops, on each of the knots. So the first one I'm gonna stick through here, lift the skin up a little bit. Once I get it in my scalpel here, push it through, it's got a thick body wall. And you push it up in, and pull it through. And then the first one, you do three, I do three wraps. Pull it just so the two ends are kissing. So you don't want to pull too tight because they'll pucker and you don't, it's not as good for he healing. And you do two wraps on the second round and you do a little bit tighter on that one. And then the third round, you do three and pull it nice and tight and it's all sutured up. And you come off the tag ends and that's it. That looks pretty good. I don't know if I'd let you get on me. But. <laughs> we have a sequence, um, as uh, Kevin explained, we have the uh, internal tag, the acoustic uh, tag. Then we have one that has the uh, external tag. Then we have one that has the light logger tag. Um, so what I'm doing is uh, launching the tags and then putting them in the, in the, to sterilize it. And I'm also recording the total length of the fish, the sex of the fish. And I'm also recording what time this, the tag was launched, surgery was started, and surgery and, and when the fish were released. So I'm just making sure all the data is correct. And uh, the tag IDs, I'm making sure that they match. Uh, the anchor IDs match and the fish IDs match. This way when we do collect these tags, We'll be able to gather information is based on the, like say like the length of the fish and stuff. You know, so in that first section where I was out with those guys on the gill net, it was kind of a last second deal. I literally jumped out of my boat, jumped in with them. They said, hey, we've got a window between the weather, even though it wasn't perfect. And we also had the USGS because really this is a big group deal. You know, having more than a couple people involved. I want to say there was eight or nine people total involved to kind of make these wheels turn. And funny enough, I said to him, hey, I'd be in doing this again or a different setup. And lo and behold, I get a call from Matt Faust at the Ohio Division of Wildlife. And he said, hey, are you ready to go tonight? So again, jumped out of my boat here, jumped in again. This time we went to the Sandusky River near Fremont. And the tags had been, you know, time of year. It really wasn't a walleye thing, even though, as you could see here, we had a little bit of everything come up. And we did not use a net this time in the river. That would be a hot mess. So we're doing some electro fishing. So it's kind of pay attention to this deal because it's really unique. You've probably seen these things if you fish enough. You know, the USGS uses these for more than just tagging purposes. Uh, but that process was really fascinating as well to me. So I hope you enjoy this one as well. We are on the Sandusky River electro shot. So we're getting ready to go electro fishing on the Sandusky River. Uh, electro fishing works this is the generator here. Turn that on. That'll create the juice that then flows to our control box here that allows us to control how much power is going out into the water based on uh, the conductivity that we'll read here shortly and then this is hooked up to the droppers up front that basically complete the circuit put an electrical field into the water that will shock and immobilize the fish and then our uh, two other biologists up there will uh, net the fish out for us before we start here we're going to take the conductivity of the water that helps us dial in how much uh, power is gonna go out in the current so that we're not frying the fish 
Um, this is supposed to be a non-lethal sampling method. So, all right. So now we've taken our water conductivity. We have this chart here helps us uh, achieve our target power for a given water conductivity. So we're about 600. So we should be between about five and 6,000 uh, watts going out into the water. You know, as you can probably see, it was a little hectic and chaotic there because the electroshocking shocks up quite literally everything. So they were very selective on what fish they wanted to put trackers in, both of species and of size. So some of the fish kind of inadvertently got netted because you just have a split second to make that decision. Uh, but a lot of fish are popping up of a multitude of species. And you know, while we started in the daytime there in early evening, we went into the night and that was simply because there was a lot of anglers on shore where they couldn't legally fish at night in that stretch of the river. So again, the DNR is always very nice about, you know, thinking of the anglers. And so that's why we continued into the night with the electroshocking because no one else could be around there to, we would be interfering. What we do with the uh, walleye? Uh, keep them. Just keep them in there? Yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed our video on fish tagging. You know, we've been trying to do this for a long time. The schedules, obviously, just like you guys were fishing and work and things, it just didn't work out for several years and I'm glad to finally have put this together. On the back side of this, I can tell you these guys that are doing this are really fishy and they're guys that are really into helping and they can make a proactive approach. And so hopefully you guys can appreciate that. They're, they're looking into things way before they become problems and getting a lot of information that actually helps us catch more fish as well and definitely helps keep those fish numbers up. So give them a little space out there. You know, they were really, really in tune with trying to stay away from anglers and not bother them. but. You guys see those guys, maybe give them a little inch. We had a few people kind of dive by and want to fish on top of the nets, which was kind of a little silly in my opinion, as a fisherman even. So give those guys an inch because they're working really hard. They're out there doing their day job as well so that we can have a better situation. So stay tuned to more videos in the, in the works as well as the podcast. If you like this uh, specific type of content, make sure you check out some of our uh, videos that we have done and podcasts specifically with the fisheries guys because there's a bunch of them out there uh, with Travis Hartman and uh, the Goot, as we like to call them. And if you don't know why, then make sure you check out that podcast in particular. So until the next episode, bigwaterfishing.com, you guys know what's up. <laughs>